Why are these martial artists fighting monkeys? <laughs> Stay tuned to find out! You got a love screen on your back end. Love screens that I've been told to grab it. I love reading manga, and I love finding new manga to read. The main way I usually find new series is when I get especially bored, I'll go check out a scanlation site and literally just start clicking any title that seems weird or interesting. Then I'll skim through the first few chapters, usually not reading it until something catches my eye. From there on, if I see a decent story hook, I'll go back and actually read it. This method is how I discovered some of the best and worst manga I've ever seen. It's how I uncovered Attack on Titan long before the anime debut, and it's also how I discovered My Hero Academia back when its first pilot chapter launched. But sometimes I'll also uncover the weirdest shit, and that's how I encountered Mashara, or as I like to call it, the monkey murder manga. The basic premise is that a guy goes back to visit his rural hometown, and it's attacked by a horde of evil monkeys that slaughter and prey upon all the human townsfolk. So without further ado, let me share with you some of my favorite WTF moments that I encountered while skimming through that I just had to share with you. Some warning though, there's some sex and violence coming up, so everything you're about to see is most definitely not safe for work. So don't say I didn't warn you. This is the community center. Why did I wake up here? More importantly, I've got to speak with Tatsuya. Yuri, you hearing that? Right ahead of us too, right? No way! Monkeys? Michiro! You... you are... Ah, it's Cecilia! No, no, this isn't what it looks like! No, this... it's not weird! It's really not! <sighs> hey, Tatsuya! Wanna fuck? Majiro! You stupid bitch! I'll take it on. You guys take a step back. Yeah! I knew you could do it, Ken! He's strong. Tatsuya's father is more overwhelming than that monkey. Perhaps he really will win. Hey, hey, he ran away. What now, Kenya? For once, they have been given something to fear. So much for killing humans so easily. Let's hurry to our destination. Yeah! But please wait! That monkey is still. Stones! That monkey's throwing stones at us! Let's hide behind that rock! What on earth should I do, Shinobu? What are you? What are you looking at? You trying to sneak a peek? Um, um, only joking! We're happy! Happy, happy, happy! Oh my, young man, do you want to join in too? You should not have saw that! Let's go over here! What? Who are you? I'm their daughter. Every time they have sex, they smoke cocaine to feel good. Now all this fits into the category I love to refer to as So Bad It's Good Entertainment, a category with such infamous movies like The Room and Troll 2. What makes something so bad it's good? I think it's the idea that it's not so much the technical incompetence that makes this stuff so memorable, but it's the combination of weird storytelling choices that you wouldn't see anywhere else combined with that aforementioned technical incompetence. So for Mashara, I wouldn't say the art, while not amazing, is bad by any means. It's just that it has enough consistently weird elements that make it much more engaging than it has any right to be. Personally, I think monkey horror is an incredibly underutilized monster subgenre. The only examples I can think of are, of course, the giant ape movies like King Kong, Mighty Joe Young, and the upcoming Rampage movie. But then there's a little movie most of you probably never heard of. I remember watching it on UPN ages ago. It was called Primal Force. Primal Force is the ultimate in B-movie schlock. What made it stand out is how seriously it took itself. Basically, Ron Perlman plays an ex-mercenary who worked on an island that bred genetically modified animals for big game hunters until they created a race of super baboons that killed everything on the island. After a rich guy crashes on the island, Ron Perlman must overcome his copious amounts of PTSD to face his demons. And well, I think this scene shows what makes Primal Force such a great piece of trash cinema. Hey! Remember me? I sure as hell remember you, you son of a bitch.
a scene where Ron Perlman has a knife fight with a monkey. It's ridiculous, but the music and tone tries to make it into this profound moment of emotional catharsis as Ron Perlman overcomes his own fears in order to literally stab his monkey demons to death. And this is what makes So Bad It's Good Cinema work. It's the combination of utter sincerity and an attempt to make art for material that is schlock. I never knew I wanted to see some sort of Apocalypse Now riff with baboons, but here I am staring at it. Same thing with The Room or Troll 2. These movies make such weird and odd choices that even if they make no sense to any normal moviegoer, they transform what should be a terrible piece of schlock into something that's weirdly fascinating. Why are the trolls in Troll 2 actually goblins that are vegetarians who turn people into plants so they can eat them? Why do a bunch of guys in suits play football in an alley? None of these things make sense, but they're so odd they become deeply ingrained in our consciousness. Because in an era where big blockbusters become safer, blander, and more homogenous, to see something weird, something we haven't seen, something that is a heart and soul, but not necessarily the brains to execute its weird vision, is deeply endearing. That's what makes Mashro so fascinating to me. It's not very good, but it just keeps on stacking so many goddamn weird elements together that I can't look away. Like the fact that the main guy is apparently a Dr. Doolittle who hears the voices of animals and can talk to them Wild Thornberry style. The fact that there's a million different types of weird monkeys. The fact that the little girl with the cocaine sex parents also seems to have psychic powers. The fact that there's this mascot journalist girl who seems to know everything that's going on and comes in and out of the story and also wears a shirt with her own name written on it. It's all these weird elements that should not go together that kind of transform this weird dumb magnet into something interesting. Not good, but interesting. And that's the main quality that purveyors of so bad it's good material like me seek out. We're always looking to the horizon for that something that will push the boundaries and show us something that we've never seen before. And sometimes the best place to look is in the dumpster. So if you haven't ever seen this manga, I recommend you check it out so we can talk about it, how it makes no sense in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video. If you got the time, check out some of my other video essays. 